day, ladies and gents. Welcome to TFI in the next video in the What's New and Inventor 2018 series, if you want to call it that. Sheet metal enhancements. There's not many, there's just one. But it's a kind of big one. It's a simple one, but it's a kind of big one. Ladies, it's multi-bodied support for sheet metal files. Right, so let's go over to uh, the new dialer box and just, just heads up before I get cracking. My interface looks horrible. And that's because Autodesk haven't quite got 4K right yet. So a lot of my dialog boxes are all squiffy, squashed, but it's looking a bit weird because of my resolution. It's at 4K. Right, let's go into the options as well. And just again, if you're seeing anything different to me, if you are following along, in application options on the file tab, I've got my measurement units and drawing standards set to millimeters and ISO because I am in Brexit world and you might be in the United States of Trump land. I don't know. I don't know. But th those are my units and standards that I've got set. So let's go and create a new sheet metal IPT. And this new feature is mostly, in fact, it's entirely focused around multi-bodied parts. If you've never worked with multi-bodied parts before, check out this tutorial up at the top right, which I've already done, which explains the theories behind multi-bodied parts and why they're useful. So what we're going to do is head over to the sheet metal defaults button up here. And this is where we can edit our sheet metal styles. Let's hit the pencil and we'll create a couple of new ones. Let's right click on default mm and I'm going to make a new style and we'll call this uh, a one mil stainless steel style. And then we'll right click on that one. We'll create another one and we'll call this one two mil stainless steel. So within our single part for sheet metal, we're going to use two different metal thicknesses of stainless steel, one mil and two mil. So we need to edit the thickness in there and then the material to stainless steel. Hit save on that, go over to this style, change its thickness to two mil and its material to stainless steel. Save, and then we need to make one of them active where you don't need to, but it does help. Have a think to yourself, which of these two styles am I gonna use more than the other? Whichever one that is, right click on it and make it active. And then all new features that you create will default to using this thickness and this metal, and then you can change it to the other one for any other Part or bodies that you create inside this uh, this sheet metal part. All right, save and close that, and then cancel on that, and we're now ready to start creating some metal. I'm not gonna model anything too fancy, it's not kind of the point. This is just to show you what the new feature is. So let's go and draw a line across here, and this is where my user interface starts to collapse as I type in the numbers 20, and I completely lose sight of the numbers 20 because my interface is collapsing. But it's not the end of the world. I'm sure it will fix it at some point. Some point. Same goes for these little glyphs, which are very difficult to see. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, so there's a little sketch profile, right, which I can now contour into a, a 3D feature. And this is new over here. Sheet metal rule. Follow defaults. Don't know what that means. Don't know why it's there. I'm pretty sure there will be a reason for it, but I haven't figured it out. But if you untick it, you can choose which style to use. Do you want to use the one mil stainless steel style, or do you want to use the two mil thick stainless steel style? If you were to tick follow defaults, it's going to use by default the active style, which is one millimeters. So let's face or contour this out by I don't know, 50 mil in both directions. Click OK, and there we go. There's our first 3D feature created using the one mil thick style, which you can now find up here on the top left in your browser if you go to your solid bodies folder and hover over the little icon, you'll see it says one mil stainless steel. So it's giving you a nice little tool tip to let you know which style you've used for which bodies in your sheet metal part. And if you think to yourself, well, mine's not, why is mine not telling me? Why is mine? Com what I can only imagine is a com another complete oversight <laughs> from Autodesk is you have to hover over the, the actual little yellow cube. <laughs> if you hover over the text, it doesn't show you the text. You have to hover over the cube. So that, that's a thing. But once you know about it, it's fine. It's just, it's just one of those things. It's just one of those things. They, they keep you amused. They do keep you amused. Right, let's, let's do another body. So we're going to create another body in the sheet metal part. And if you still think to yourself, I don't know what's happening. I don't know why we're doing this. A multi-bodied part is a different approach for assembly design. You are designing an assembly in a part file. Each body represents what will be a part in an assembly. So it's allowing you to create an entire assembly condensed into a single part before then making it into an assembly later on. Why? Because it's 
sometimes easier to create the geometry in a single part file than it is to have to design parts separately and constrain them all together using angles and inserts and mates and tangents. So some people prefer to use multi-body parts as opposed to top-down or bottom-up or skeleton modeling type assembly approaches. So it's a nice way of doing assembly design. So now we've got our first part in our virtual assembly. We can rename this and we'll call it the, the main body bit. And then we can start a new sketch, drop it on the top, and let's just do, I don't know, it doesn't have to be exact. I don't particularly care what this is, but let's just do another profile. And then as we face this, it allows us to select this button here, which is completely new in 2018, new solid. This lets us, instead of creating another bit of metal and joining it to the main body bit, which would reuse the one mil style and join it to this bit, this is letting us create a new body in the sheet metal part and then pick a different sheet metal rule, i.e. the two mil stainless steel one. So this new f profile here is now going to be generating a new body using a two mil thick bit of metal. Click OK and there you go, there's solid two and your main body and solid two and then we can call this the, I don't know, the, the top bit and as we hover over the cube you can see that one's using the two mil stainless steel and that one's using the one mil stainless steel and it is behaving like an assembly. You can right click on either of these bodies and then you can say, you know, make it invisible and turn it off, make it, you know, hide it just like you would a part in an assembly. So that's kind of, it's kind of the idea behind it, right? Let's save this and let's call this uh, sheet metal multi body and then we'll go and explode this into assembly. So this is the next stage that you would normally go through when you do a multi-body part design. Once you've designed your single part and all the bodies and you're happy with it, you would go to manage and you select make components and then you select the part or the bodies that you want to ultimately be part in an assembly. So you pick those two and it's gonna generate a new IAM file. The IAM file is gonna be this top level IPT name here. So SM multi-body dot IAM and it's going to create that IAM with these two bodies as IPTs in the IAM. You can choose the target location for where you're going to save the assembly and all the parts, which templates to use. In the next dialog box, these are the two IPTs that are going to get created. Top bit IPT, main body bit IPT. The template's going to use the sheet metal template, the bomb structure, all that kind of stuff, the save location. Click OK. And there you go. There's your sheet metal multi-body assembly with the two parts generated from the two bodies in the original IPT. So that's the whole point of this. That is the whole point of this. We've now created an assembly from a multi-bodied sheet metal part file. And the bet it's not the best bit, but as a bonus, as an absolute added bonus to all of this, and I was quite amazed that it did this, if we open up, say, main body bit, right? This is a derived part. It's derived this feature here into an IPT. So you can see here we don't have any feature information. We don't have extrusions and sketches and contour flanges and work planes and whatever else. It's a derived feature. But I can flat pattern it. <laughs> I can actually flat pattern a derived feature. That's, admit, that's pretty good. I was impressed when that happened. I was not expecting that to happen. So well done to them for doing that. That's pretty good. And now that that's done, right, let's activate the folded model and make sure that's saved. Now that that's done, again, is another bo complete bonus we can just right click straight on the top level node, say create a drawn view, whack that onto an IDW template, and then say give me a flat pattern, boom, boom, and boom, there you go, there's your flat pattern done, which is a bit small, obviously I'd make it bigger on the drawn sheet, but within a couple of clicks, you've gone from a sheet metal multi-body part to an assembly to now having a flat pack drawn view straight on a drawn sheet. Tiny little change, tiny little change, just, I'm saying tiny little change, I'm sure there's a lot of code that went into it in the background, but from a, a you know clicks and picks and clicks from a user interface point of view it's a small change but it's just opened up a massive world of opportunities for people that use sheet metal to, uh, to to give them a bit more flexibility in how they design and what they design so there's you go there you go there you go there's another new feature for inventor 2018 sheet metal multi-body part enhancements and i'll see you in the next one toodles